that all is well with you and your family. We are the New Jerusalem Baptist Church. My name is Minister White. We are located at 1219 Dunbar Oaks Drive in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Our beloved pastor is Dr. Thomas J. Henderson. And we hope something is said or done that will bring you closer to the Lord and will strengthen your walk. After the call of worship, we will have an open selection by Minister and Deaconess Wyke. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing.
me walk each day with thee. Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. Thank you, Minister and Deaconess White. Put thy trust in thee. Let the Lord lead you. Let his right hand guide you, hold you. At this time, we will have a, well, we'll have our scripture read by Minister Harris and following Minister Harris, Minister Campbell will lead us in our invocation. Good morning. I greet you in Jesus' joy. I'll be reading from the book of Psalms, the 118th Psalm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his, for he is good because his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endures forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endures forever. I call upon the name of the Lord in distress and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord take part, the Lord take my part with them and help me. Therefore shall I see my distress, I deceive my desires upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in princess. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They can pass me about ye, they can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Amen. Let us bow our heads. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. As we come before you, humble as we know how, thanking and praising you for all that you have done for us. You allowed us to get up this morning without any help from anyone or anything. You touched us with your finger of love, caused us to move and we want to take to say thank you for letting us come forward lift up your holy and precious name and that we can show all that is all that are listening uh, with clarity and understanding that we have come to praise you and honor you for what you have already done for us and what you will continue to do for us because we know that you are not short on your word let's just program the day, Lord Jesus, that somebody might be touched. They might come run and say, what must I do to be saved? Save. Keep them, guide them, and lift them up as you have lifted us up. This prayer we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Harris and Minister Campbell. At this time, we will have announcements read by Sister Deaconess Dana Green. Following um, Deaconess Green, we will have remarks 
by our very own Dr. Thomas Henderson. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the joy that is of Jesus Christ. Our special announcements for this week are as follows. Keep in prayer and keep in mind. We ask the Lord to encamp his angels around our sick, the shut-in, traveling for read, our young people at home and away. Special prayers are requested for Mother Henderson, Sister Williams, Deaconess Birch, the Blakely, Dunbar, White, and Wilson families, as well as all New Jerusalem Baptist Church families, friends, co-workers, the needy, the downtrodden, the lost, and others who have said, pray for me. Give them a call and an encouraging word that they may know that we love them and that prayer changes things. Reminder until further notice, we will have Wednesday Bible study prayer service and Sunday morning service 11 a.m. via Zoom. We have combined all Sunday services and prayer Bible study services on this one link. Join our Zoom meeting on the following link and meeting ID 868-236-3959. We thank God for those who attended our New Jerusalem Baptist Church business meeting on this past Saturday. An important part of the meeting was a review discussion of the possibility of reinstituting our in-person services at New Jerusalem Baptist Church. The attendees voted in favor of reinstituting the in-person services. Procedural information and more specific information will be disseminated to the membership by the COVID response team soon, as well as a request for some specific additional member input. Don't forget, Donations, tithes, offerings, etc., can be made online at www.njbcmd.org. Remember also, you can give by mail, our church website, and by cash app at dollar sign NJBCMD. Special thanks for your love offering as always on last week. Please visit and support our church website. Our church website web address is www.njbcmd.org. You can join our live Sunday service starting at 11 a.m. at Twitter at New Jerusalem BC, YouTube, and Facebook. Be sure to visit, sign in, and direct others to the site and a blessing. Our thought of, our thought of the week, do you sometimes take offense at the things people say? Or vice versa, are people sometimes offended or hurt by what you say when in fact you meant no harm but wanted to emphasize a truth as you saw it? It may be the way you say things that cause you to become a blessing slayer. Scripture warns us in Colossians 4 and 6 to let your speech be with grace. For instance, when you talk to the wife about the overabundance of charges on the card, do you speak loudly with great animation and a dose of negativity? Or when a family member tracks in mud or spilled juice on your freshly mopped floor, were your words unnecessarily angry or vicious, making the person feel small, stupid, or worse? Such behavior words can such behavior or words can be a stumbling block and a blessing slayer. Instead of providing encouragement to another to do better or to be more Christ-like, they may just feel your anger. It is important to know the difference between being offensive and a blessing. And sometimes it's just in your manner of speech. As Christians, let us be thoughtful, patient, and take the time to ensure that our words and actions reflect the love of Christ within us. We can be firm without being demeaning or hurtful. When we yield control of our bodies and our tongues to Christ, his love will be evident in what we say and what we do. Remember, gentle and Christ-like words fall lightly, but carry great weight. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sister Green, for the reading of our announcements. And good morning to all the saints of New Jerusalem. I greet you in Jesus' joy. And I'm thankful to God for those of you who are visiting with us this morning, and we pray that um, you will be blessed by our service. We certainly are blessed by uh, the 
mere fact that you're taking the time to come and worship with us. Who knows, we may have some angels tuning in. Uh, as scripture says, be beware or, or watch for an entertaining strangers unaware. Uh, we have may have angels in our midst. So if you're an angel and you're watching over us, thank you, thank you. And certainly uh, we are blessed and rejoice in your presence with us this morning. Uh, on yesterday, uh, we rejoiced at having a church meeting that was well attended and I thought it went very well as it related to accomplishing our purpose. We were there to discuss the uh, return to in-person services and uh, we came to the agreement that we, uh, if God says the same, we'll be returning to our in-person services on the first Sunday of April, April the 3rd of this year. And uh, we are certainly looking forward to that. The mass mandates uh, for the state of Maryland was uh, lifted on this past Monday. And though the mass mandate has been lifted, uh, we, many of us still are, are wearing the mask uh, for, for uh, Kind of, kind of has become like a security blanket to us, and uh, I don't think there's any problem with people doing that. So, in our church services, we haven't finalized the protocol for uh, a mass or not wearing masks for the first Sunday, but our COVID uh, committee, uh, COVID. Response Committee, uh, headed by Deaconess Jardina White, uh, is uh, coming up with the protocol that we'll be passing on online uh, as soon as we have it available. So we're excited. Uh, in the month of April, uh, on the third Sunday of April is Easter Sunday. And then uh, that Friday before that, it's Good Friday. And uh, we'll be just rejoicing in the Lord that uh, after a better part of two years, uh, we uh, see signs that we may be able to return to in-person services. Uh, also, um, uh, as it relates to uh, the latest uh, reports on uh, the coronavirus and uh, how we are doing with nationwide. We're bringing it under control. All of the trending continues to be downward. Uh, uh, almost all the surrounding states are lifting uh, uh, mass mandates. And for whatever reason, Seems as though there's some folks around the country who still want to make a big issue out of it. Uh, and certainly that is their rights. Uh, and we thank God though for our president and the way in which he's handled things and have us on the path to uh, put in this thing behind us. So I ask that you will please be in prayer for our president he has something much more uh, onerous that he's having to deal with as it relates to the war in Russia and just how to go about uh, giving aid to the Ukrainians. Uh, I can imagine he's had some sleepless nights on just uh, how to come to the aid of U Ukrainians. Uh, we look at the the news items and see people uh, just dying daily uh, and seemingly senselessly and the world looking on. Uh, they, they did no reason, they, uh, they gave no reason for uh, 
that kind of attack being brought against them, other than that they wanted to be an independent country, uh, uh, which they had every right uh, to be. And uh, uh, there are others who are trying to uh, take away their independence uh, in, uh, against their will, I guess you should say. So let's be in prayer for them. We've got uh, last count some 800,000 plus Ukrainians that have fled the country trying to avoid the, the tragedies of war. Uh, there are others that are dying and uh, being quite courageous and willing to die uh, rather than to give up their freedom, even though in many cases, it seems apparent that uh, they are uh, going to be overcome. But as the old Negro spiritual says, before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. And so um, sometimes uh, freedom costs you something. And the freedom that uh, we as a people as a black people, I should say today, did not come without a price. Uh, there were many sacrifices that were made. There were many lives uh, that were lost in order to uh, obtain the freedom that we're enjoying today, not to mention uh, the hundreds of thousands that were killed in the Civil War, uh, uh, which the focal uh, point of that uh, war in itself was the uh, issue of slavery. And so uh, brother against brother. Uh, seems as though that's the kind of thing we're experiencing even there in Ukraine, uh, brother against brother. And you hear some of the, I heard at least one of the Russian soldiers say that it's very confusing for us because we don't know who to shoot at. They all look and talk the same as we do. And that's very distressing uh, in trying to go to war. So uh, we have a God who rules over all. We have a God who uh, sees uh, what goes on even in our bedroom. We have a God who sees and knows all things. And we're going to pray uh, to that God who not only sees and knows, but he has the power uh, to deliver us in every situation. And we're going to keep our faith in him. And as uh, Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. For I know that my Redeemer Live and I shall see them for myself. Amen. So uh, let's continue to pray once again for uh, those people who are being ravished by war. That's uh, all that I have in the way of announcements. Uh, once again, we ask that you be in prayer for New Jerusalem as we plan to return. Our in-person services on the first Sunday in April. We attempted to uh, return to in-person services a few months ago. Maybe it was the summer of last year and uh, it didn't quite work out the way we, we had hoped. Uh, and so uh, once again, we're trying it and uh, we believe that this time uh, we might be able to continue uh, with our services when we start. Pray for us, though. Pray for us that God will deliver us and give us the wherewithal to once again return to our in-person services. We had just a great time in our meeting yesterday, seeing one another, and a few of us, even after the meeting, went out and fellowship together for a little while, and it was certainly uh, a rejoicing time and so good to see uh, one another. I, uh, unusual, uh, 
it's unusual observation I made of seeing all the saints, almost every one of them to a person and lost weight. So if there's anything that good came out of the coronavirus is it made us a little more fit. Amen. Hey, all, all, all of us had a few pounds to spare. So uh, we thank God and once again, pray for us that we might uh, be able to return to our in-person services. And when we return, we go have a big celebration and we go have a, some chicken and potato salad and we go get the pounds back on. <laughs> Amen. Ah, I just make you laugh a little bit. Hopefully not. But uh, at this time, uh, we're going to look to uh, our person that's going to be uh, doing the hymn of preparation at this time. Thank you, Pastor. This seems to be trouble, evil, sickness all around, wars, rumors of wars, but we know that God has promised and will take care of his children. So we trust him that through it all, God never fails. So let us enjoy the gift of joy he gives us for the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. I've been to lots of places and I've seen a lot of faces. There have been times I felt so all alone. But in those lonely hours, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know I was his own. I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valley. And I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. For if I'd never had a problem, I wouldn't know that he could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Oh, through it all, through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. I'm telling you through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Oh, through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Amen. God bless. Thank you, Deaconess Green, for that uh, very uh, 
encouraging song. And certainly it spoke to my soul. Thank God for the good times. I thank him for the bad times. If I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. And certainly uh, I've been Jason and I, where we are encountering some things that uh, are different from anything we've had to endure in our lifetime. But as the song says, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. And I thank God for that blessed assurance. Uh, I thank God for his keeping power with Sister Henderson and I. And though Sister Henderson is the one with the ailment, the husband and the wife, we are as one. And what Sister Henderson is going through, so am I. And uh, what, am I, what I am able to uh, do for God, so is she. And so she lives through me lived through her and it's a wonderful wonderful uh, marriage experience when you uh, get to that point where one isn't as strong as they once were but the other one is there to give them the strength that they would not have if it were not for the mystery and the gift of marriage. So uh, we're doing well, praise the Lord. We're not doing as well as we'd like to do, but uh, thank God uh, we are doing as well as uh, the situation allows at this time. And we are thanking, we're praising, and we are trusting God. And our testimony still is the Lord is good. He's real good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Keep us in your prayer that we might be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in his work. He's not through with us yet. This morning, uh, I'd like to share with you from the word of God from the book of Ephesians. Uh, those of you who have your Bible and wish to turn along and follow with us, uh, our scripture lesson for this morning, Ephesians chapter three. And we're going to read verses 13 through 21 for our scripture lesson. Ephesians chapter Three, uh, reading verses 13 through 21. Wherefore, I desire that she faint not at the tribulations for you, at my tribulations, I should say, for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breath and length and depth 
and hide it. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. This morning I have said, sure. Pray for my strength. I'm feeling as inadequate as ever this morning. And my hope and my rejoicing is in the fact that the word of God says that when I am weak, then he is strong in me. And so I'm compelled to say like the Apostle Paul, therefore I gladly rejoice in my infirmities that God may shine through in me. Ephesians chapter three, our text verses for this morning. We're gonna focus our attention for just a brief moment on verses 17 through 19, which I'll read again for the hearing. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend all saints, what is the breath and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Using for our subject this morning, Uncomprehensible. Uncomprehensible. The epistle that is ascribed to the Ephesians is said to be one of the Apostle Paul's most uh, impersonal epistles. And that it and the, 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 the most trusted, if I can use the term, uh, versions of the original, original manuscript, uh, if you will, uh, do not include the <clears throat> inscription to the epistles or to the Ephesians, I should say. Uh, some seem to think that it was actually written to the church at Laodicea. Uh, and it was also the first of Paul's prison epistles. It's just so absolutely astounding, amazing, uh, the many epistles that the apostle wrote while he was in prison at Rome. And uh, we know uh, that he never was released uh, from prison, but was beheaded. And while being in prison for doing the will of God, by being in prison and sharing with the world the gift of eternal life and being 
enslaved and in prison without a call, without a cause. He wrote many of the epistles that are included in God's holy Bible. So when he says that when I'm weak, then God is strong in me. He's got all the evidence to back up those words of scripture. No one else has written as many epistles as the apostle Paul did. And in prison, shipwreck, snake bitten, stoned, and beaten, and in spite of all the, the, the troubles that he endured, there was nothing that he encountered. There was nothing that he endured that could deter him from doing what God had placed upon him to do. When he met God on the Damascus Road and the Lord said to him, I will show you what great things I will have you to do stand before kings and leaders. I will show you what great things you will have to suffer for my sakes. And in spite of knowing that suffering was in store for him, he with joy and gladness. And that's why in our passage this morning, he says, uh, that you might uh, uh, glory in my suffering. And uh, when we look at the Apostle Paul and how he suffered, God kept him through it all. It makes us to rejoice. Thank God that he pressed on in spite of his suffering. And uh, uh, we all pray that that would be uh, our legacy in life, that in spite of what, whatever we had to endure in life, that we didn't let anything stand in our way and let anything turn us away from doing what God has assigned our hearts and our hands to do. He shared in that epistle, in that third chapter, uh, how God has chosen him, him, the apostle Paul. And he refers to himself this way. He says, I, the least of the least, not just the least of the apostles, not just the least of God's servants, but he said, the least of the least. It says that uh, I uh, rejoice that God has chosen me to reveal to the Gentiles the mystery, the mystery of the church age in so many words, mystery that had been hidden up until uh, this time. And he says, he's chosen me, an apostle to the Gentiles, to reveal to them that God is not just the God of the Jews, that God is not just merciful and kind to the Jews, that the, the Israel and the Jews have no uh, special rights or claims as it relates to God's mercy, his grace, and his blessing, but that our God is merciful and kind to all mankind. And the Apostle Paul says he revealed 
unto me the mystery of the church and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he will through Christ Jesus make of one Israel two, both Israel and Gentiles. They will both become one in me. They uh, who we have none but the righteous, no male, no female, no Jew, no Gentile, none but the righteous. And so uh, this morning, as I share with you from uh, these few verses, I just want to focus for a moment on the incomprehensible love of our God. When I, when I, when, when, when I tried to comprehend or understand, if you will, just why God loves us so, that he is so merciful and so kind to us. And I begin with myself. Amen. It's a good way to always approach God and to inquire of God, Lord, why do you love me so? And I begin with myself. And when I think of how I have served God through the years, or not served God, if you will, and I think of the uh, many years, as the songwriter would put it, years I spent in vanity and pride. Yes, I, I, that song does apply to me. Carry not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died. I only my response is, why do you love me so, Lord? It's in, I just don't understand. It's incomprehensible that in spite of my wretchedness, and even as I have uh, repented and committed myself more fervently and more steadfastly to the service of God, yet more often than I care to admit, I feel so very inadequate. I feel so often that I'm not doing all that I can do to give glory to our God's good and holy name. I feel so adequate and uh, knowing that, that I, I just come so very short of doing all that he's assigned my hearts and my, my heart and my hands to do. And yet, in the midst of my feeling inadequate, I'm assured that he loves me. And as First John 1, 19, 1, 9 puts it, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And uh, if we have fellowship one with another, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And so uh, I come short and do all that God has asked me to do or commands me to do. And yet, 
He loves me. Even after I've committed myself to him uh, uh, as a, by faith and try to serve him as best I can by faith, I just feel so undeserving and inadequate uh, to deserve the love that God has for me. And so I, I begin with myself, but uh, then I say, well, maybe there's some others uh, that I could look upon and see how their lives exemplify the love of God and how their lives are lived in a manner that can justify, if you will, the love of God for them. And, and, and when I look at some of my very best friends, I've been on the staff of the Washington Baptist Seminary for since 1984, served as pastor of New Jerusalem since 1987. And so I've, I've been counted some great stalwart men of God, the likes of Andrew Fowler, the likes of John D. Bussey. And so very many other faithful servants of God. And yet, I can tell you that from my fellowship with those men and what I know about their lives, that they too, in spite of all the greatness that they've come more often than they like to admit, short doing the things that would be reflective of God's love for them. You know, I, I, and in doing that, I, I, I thought about the passage when the Apostle Paul says, when I would do good, that evil is always present. So uh, with, 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 my, with my mind, I serve the law of God in my mind. I want to do right in my mind. I want to be pleasing in the sight of God in my mind. I want to do everything that God would have me to do. But in spite of the fact that in my heart and in my mind, I want to do right. When I would do good, evil is always present. I, I used to think that that was only the case for unsaved people, but uh, when we get saved, we don't become sinless. When we become saved, we still have that struggle that goes on in our mortal bodies. When we get saved, our perfectly soul, saved souls that know no sin, that's been redeemed in the blood of Jesus, are still housed in this corruptible flesh. And therefore, as the Apostle Paul uh, uh, teaches us in the word of God that daily, he says daily, I have to modify the deeds of the flesh. Every time I wake from my flesh or wake from my sleep, I should say, since I have to fall on my knees. Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. When I got saved, that didn't mean that all this kind of stuff went away. It just made me more aware of sin pulling at my soul. Therefore, I become more aware of the struggle as I try to live the Christian life. And 
I rejoice though in knowing that he says in his word, uh, draw near unto me. I'll draw near unto you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So daily, I press. Daily, I press for the mark in the high column, which is in Christ Jesus. And when I think of all these struggles that we go through, in spite of the fact that the glory of the Lord indwells these mortal bodies. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And I think of the fact that every time I lay down at night, the Holy Spirit lies down with me. Every time Think of the fact, wherever I go, whatever I do, the Holy Spirit is present there with me. Urging me and guiding me, directing me, helping me to overcome the deeds of the flesh. But know for sure, my Christian sisters and brothers, it does not come naturally. Everything you do, everything you think, everything you say has to take account of the fact that your corruptible flesh is at war against you. And it is sometimes make you say some things that you don't want to say. You ever had that experience that every now and then a curse word comes out of your mouth and you say, where did that come from? Of course, I'm not talking about myself, but <laughs> oh, Father God. And we say, where did that come from? Every now and then some things come out of your mouth that you thought that you had put behind you. And you say, where did that come from? And simply confirmation that we are saved. But though we are saved, we still have to wrestle against the deeds of the flesh. And so the Apostle Paul in this passage that I read for you this morning, is praying to God that you may comprehend the fullness of God's love for you. When I think of trying to comprehend the fullness of this love and the reason why I don't deserve this love, uh, I'm reminded that we can do absolutely nothing without him. And though we cannot do anything without him, he grants us success even when we don't give him the uh, praise or acknowledge him when we do succeed. And there are so many in this world that enjoy success in their lives, at least as it relates to the material things of this world and the things that this world look up and look to uh, as a measure of their greatness, as a measure of their worth. And they 
instead of saying, praise God and thank God for his goodness and his mercy and his love, his bountiful goodness towards me, they pat themselves on the back. Look what, look what I have done. Pick myself up by my own bootstraps. And the most deplorable part of those people who would make success that they may have attained, uh, stature that they may have attained in life and they look at others and say, well, they had the opportunity just like me. And why should I feel sorry for them? They're just lazy and uh, they just uh, didn't apply themselves. They had the same opportunities as I had. No, no, no. We didn't have the same opportunities. That's why I'm ever mindful of that saying, measure a man's uh, level of attainment, not by the level of greatness that he has reached, but by the depths from which he has come. Many people that call themselves successful and great today are people that were born into uh, situations in their life where they uh, never knew failure, never had to worry about lacking anything because it was handed down to them through generations. Whereas I'm often made mindful of many people in this world who are born in situations where they are destined for failure from the time they come into this world. And true greatness is usually born out of adversity. Those that we can truly call great are those that have risen up from the ashes and attained uh, heights that uh, they had uh, so many odds working against. We think of People like Martin Luther King, we think of people uh, like Barack Obama. We think of people like Harriet Tubman who rose up from the ashes and have risen to heights where they are revered by people throughout all generations and all ages. And, and they, uh, the old folks would put it, they weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Uh, they had to go through great suffering. Uh, Apostle Paul would tell you that uh, he, he, he was born into a very welcoming situation when he came into the world. His, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees, of the Hebrew of Hebrews. And concerning the law, I kept them all. But then something happened to him. Something happened to him. And he saw himself for who he really was. Who was he really? That's the end of the thing. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
And even though he thought he had attained great heights, daily he had eaten at his conscience that he was not as great, that he was not as pleasing in the sight of God as he desired to be. There was something missing in his life until he met our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road. And after he met his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road, he said, therefore I count all but dumb. All that I've attained, all that I have, the, the awards I've gotten, all the acclamation I've received, I count it all but dumb. Make it plain to you, waste, human waste. I count it all but human waste. That I might attain the excellency of Jesus Christ. That I might know him in his suffering. Is suffering. So, so uh, no matter no matter how uh, high you think you may reach in this life, you don't give God the glory. You don't know where your blessing came from. Then you don't truly know that there's a God rules over all. You don't know that the Bible says, what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Therefore seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You think that Solomon was seeking after gain? You think that Solomon was seeking after things? When, when Solomon was anointed king over Israel, his prayer to God was for wisdom and understanding and knowledge that he might be able to lead God's people. He didn't ask for one single thing. God added all these things to him. People were coming from all over the world so that they might know the wisdom and the knowledge of Solomon. And it brings silver, it bring gold. And silver and gold meant nothing to them as it related for sharing in the wisdom and the knowledge that Solomon had, that God had granted to him in response to his prayer. Lord, give me wisdom, give me knowledge to rule over God's people. Your people, Father God. I'm not adequate to rule over your people, but with you on my side, with wisdom and knowledge that comes from you, I can do it. God said, because you didn't ask for things, <clears throat> he blessed him. Not only did he bless him, bless him, but he was acknowledged in his days as one of the wealthiest people in all the world. Where did it come from? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. People from all over the world would just come and give gold and silver and uh, uh, precious jewels to Solomon just to hear the knowledge and the wisdom that he got from God. What does that tell you about knowledge and wisdom? And the Bible confirms that it's more precious 
read the proper, just more precious. Hold to her, embrace her. It's more precious than silver and gold. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And so don't, uh, when, when, when I think of how what we call great people in this world gives God so little credit, it's incomprehensible to me that God loves us so. The psalmist says, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou dost visit him and, and, and give him dominion over all that thy hands have made? What is man? What love? Incomprehensible, my sisters. I just can't understand it. I can't un come to grips with it. Why love, uh, Lord, uh, God should love us so. Adding insult to injury, we complain about our shortcomings as if we did nothing con to contribute to them. Oh. Why God made me poor like this? Why uh, do I have to go through the suffering of slavery? Why do I have to endure the, the discrimination of being black? Uh, why did God make me like this? Why did God make you like this? What you think that you uh, uh, you could have done a better job. You think that God didn't know what he was doing when he make, made you? So the thing made, say to the maker, why hast thou made me thus and thus? And if I, if I would do it, I could do a better job than you. Is that what you're saying? Don't you know that we were all fearfully and wonderfully made? Glorious. Glorious is thy name, O oh Lord. Thank you. For allow me to know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My skin is black. Glory to God, praise God, thank you, Father God. Beautiful colors of my black skin that goes from, 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 from beige to the darkest of blues. Thank you, Father God. Fearfully and wonderfully me. Thank you, Father God, for my hair, which it's coarse and sometimes cakey. I prefer to call it curly, Father God. And if I want to, I can straighten it out. I can do things, anything with it that I so desire. Thank you. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, Father God. You let the sun shine on the yes and unjust. Thank you, Father God, that your promises or not limited to race, creed, or color. And if we miss out on your promises, it is not because of our race, it's because of our lack in faith and trust in you. And not realizing that we can do all things through Christ. And if we have to suffer for righteousness sake, that, uh, a little that a, a righteous man has is far greater than the riches, the many riches of the, the unrighteous. So I'm gonna I, 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 I'm gonna stand on the Lord's side. I'm gonna stand on the Lord's side, and, 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 and though in this life I may have to live like a pauper. 
Songwriter says, a king or a pauper, what does it matter? I'm a child of the king, a king or a pauper, what does it matter? They're building a castle for me over there. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm coming again to receive you <clears throat> unto myself. Be steadfast. Keep holding on. Whatever you have to endure in this life. If any man, remember that this word says, if any man will live godly, he shall suffer persecution. So, so blessed is the man who's persecuted for righteousness sake. Don't worry about what you can have to endure in this life. It's worth it all. It's worth it all. For the joy that shall be revealed in us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't give up. Keep holding on. Uh, don't, don't, don't hang your head down. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. There you ask, who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. Lift up your head. I'm a child of the King. With Jesus, my Savior, incomprehensible, unworthy, more than anything else, my sisters and brothers, that I bring into a club. And I think of how he redeemed us. Lord have mercy. I can only cry incomprehensible. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die. God. Maker and creator of all mankind, God, omnipotent God, uh, omniscient God, omnipresent God, omnipotent all power in his hand. God is not robbery to take upon himself a body. He so loved us. He so loved the world that he, he, he sent his only begotten son to redeem us from our sin, our unworthy state, our state that we were in. And we were so blind. We were so lost that all had sinned. There was none righteous. Not only was there none righteous, there were none who were even seeking after God. Pastor, you say that all the time. I say it all the time because it's always true. And if you don't come to realization, you cannot really attempt to appreciate just how much God loves you. Left his throne in glory. Gave his only begotten son. Come down into this world that we had messed up so with thorns and thistles and dying and crying and killing and wars and rumors of war. He grew in wisdom and stature. He healed the sick and gave sight to the blind. And yet, yet, he so loved us that when he came down to redeem us, we rejected him. 
God himself in the flesh, we rejected him, crucify him. How dare he come to redeem me, crucify him. They marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall, trying to find some fault in him. And, and, and the persecutor said, in him I find no fault. And in spite of finding him innocent, crucify him, crucify. He was so holy, we couldn't stand to be in his presence. Get him out of our face. Crucify him. Not realizing that he came to redeem us from our sins. Therefore, as they marched him up on Calvary's hill, as they nailed him to that old rugged cross, as they lifted him high and stretched him wide, let me tell you, my sisters and brothers, it was not nails that held Jesus to the cross. It was not uh, uh, the fact that he had, didn't have the power that they were able to capture him. He gave himself a ransom to bail us out of jail, to bail us out of death row. We were all on death row. He gave himself a ransom. to take away our sins. Incomprehensible. But man of love, my sisters and brothers, as we bring it to a close, he's in love. How can it be that Christ should die for Apostle Paul says, oh, I pray my Christian sisters and brothers that you may comprehend the breadth. Uh, it's wider than the earth. That you may comprehend the length. It's wider than the, longer than the, the seas, that you may comprehend the depths. It's deeper than the depths of hell. Uh, and uh, that you might know the heights. It's, it reaches to the heavens, my sisters and brothers. And even though he prayed that we might comprehend the breath, that we may comprehend uh, the heights, that we may comprehend uh, the depths that we may comprehend the fullness of God. He then acknowledges that 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 it is uh, beyond our understanding. Such knowledge is too wonderful for us, but I'm so glad that I had just enough to say, Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Have mercy. On me, save my soul. And in my wretched condition, he so loved me. He looked beyond my fault. Saw my need. And if he could save a wretch like me, who I, I joined the Apostle Paul in saying, who was the least of the least. He could save anyone. So, though you can't understand God's love for you, though you can't believe that he could love you so, my sisters and brothers, I'm here to remind you this morning that he does indeed. And if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus, 
that thou shall be saved. Maybe I've gotten through to someone this morning with the depths, the height, and the breadth of God's love. And he so loved us. And he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Are you ready to receive this matchless gift of God? Are you ready to receive this amazing grace? Grace, the undeserved favor of God. No one can say that they deserve God dying for them. That's why it's incomprehensible. And, and so we can only say thank you, Father God, for loving us so. Maybe one day as we press to experience the fullness of God's love as best we can in this life according to the measure of our faith, the day is going to come when we're going to share this robe of flesh. You'll be able to shout to the depths of our voices. We'll be able to praise him without stammering. We'll be able to praise him uh, without any limitations. Shed this robe of flesh, shed this mortal body. There we're going to be with the Lord throughout eternity. Praising him. That is the promise that he offers to you if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart this day. And he'll make you join heirs with Christ Jesus. That, that's a whole nother sermon. Join heirs with Christ Jesus. If you don't know what join heirs mean, you're going to have to go and look it up on your own this morning. And I tell you, you will rejoice. If you do look it up to know that you are joined heir with Christ Jesus because you believe in Jesus, that is the promise that God has in store for you. You believe right now, not later on. Later on is not promised you, not tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised you, not next week. Next week is not promised you, or next month or next year, but right now, this day, while the blood is still running warm in your veins, while the breath is still in your body. Right now, you can put all the fear of death and hell behind you by saying, Father God, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. You can shed that burden of sin. You believe this day. Father God, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your matchless, uncomprehensible love. We thank you, Lord, for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. We look forward to that day, Father God, when we shed this robe of flesh. We have been able to worship you and praise you throughout eternal ages. But until that time, Father God, strengthen us where we are weak. Build us up, Father God, where we are torn down. Lord, if there's anyone reaching out this morning to be saved, that you will accept his prayer on my behalf. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Come into my heart. Save my soul. In the name of Jesus, we pray and for his sake. Amen. That's it, my sisters and brothers. And certainly we praise and thank God for his presence. We praise him and thank him for the power of his Holy Spirit. 
and we give him all praise, all glory, and all honor. We ask that you continue to be in prayer for us until we come together again on next Sunday, our communion Sunday. We obviously don't have an offering time on line, but there's still a need for an offering, and I'm not ashamed to make an appeal to you to give to New Jerusalem, especially those of you who are members of New Jerusalem, and to know that if you give, you shall be given to. Understand that big and when God asks you to give according to his word, word because he said what does thou have O man that thou didst not first receive if thou didst receive it why boastest thou we came into this world with nothing we're going to leave out of this world with nothing all things come from thee O Lord and of thine own have we given thee don't give them a system, brothers. Don't go stand on the corner uh, with the bucket talking about your asking to help the work of God. God does not work that way. He blesses you that you might be a blessing. Blesses you you might have give according to his word and nowhere in his word does it speak of us having to go and beg the world for anything. So I say once again, I'm not begging. I'm asking that you might give, that you might be a blessing. And the word of God says in the same measure in which he measure, it shall be measured to you again. He who sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he who sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man as he purposeth in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. That concludes our service. My sisters and brothers, for this, another glorious Lord's Day. And as we bring it to a close, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. We love you, my sisters and brothers. God loves you more. Till we meet again in Jesus' name.